So welcome to Healthy Chats with the Doc. Today, Dr. Brooke Leverone is going to talk to us about the right kind of supplementation and can you overdose or can you get toxic amounts of vitamins and supplements? And so what's the safe way to take nutraceuticals or supplements? So doctor, with that, like, let's put it in perspective. You know, one of the things that you and I were talking about is, you know, what is the right amount to take? Obviously it's going to be personalized, but can you overdose or can you have toxic amounts of vitamins and Let's, let's put average versus optimal in perspective, kind of give us a high overview of, you know, what, what about vitamins and, and how, how should we look at them as far as from kind of an individual perspective? Yeah, so, you know, we've talked a little bit about this. I think we talked about a, um, a uh, why supplements are important. We talked about why supplements are important in one of our podcasts and or one of our live chat things that we're doing um, in the past. And the reason that we recommend nutrients is because some of us genetically have a higher need for nutrients. Um, I always think of vitamins and minerals as the workers in the factory. I think of us as one big biological factory with all these machines that convert one product into the next product and all the workers in the factory are our vitamins and minerals that help those machines function. So if we are trying to optimize function in the factory or specifically work on maybe one part of the factory, extra of those workers is going to help things move a little bit better. So that's, you know, sort of where we think about when needing vitamins. And then we can also talk about how most of us don't get enough in our diet because maybe we're not eating all our fruits and vegetables. There's also concern about the mineral content of the soil. And so therefore not actually, even if you are eating the fruits and vegetables, are you getting enough? Um, and then there's just the fact that we live in this high paced, high stress, high demand world. So we just need more workers in the factory so that we can keep up with all of that as well too. So those are sort of, you know, some of the things we think about when talking about vitamins. And again, as I mentioned, some people genetically just need more of certain types. And so when we're looking at vitamins and you go to the store, there's so many, it can be so confusing. So when we think about vitamins in general, we're looking at, you know, your B vitamins, your water soluble, your fat soluble vitamins. These are different than minerals. Minerals are you know, calcium, iron, magnesium. These are nutrients that our body uses. And these, and then vitamins are B vitamins. And so vitamins and minerals sort of fall into the category of our vitamins, which is different than like a supplement per se, because supplements can have other items in it besides a vitamin and a mineral. And when we are then recommending these to patients and, you know, or if somebody goes in the store to look at all of these products on the shelves, I mean, how do you know which one you should be taking? How do you know how much you should be taking, right? So it can be very, it can be very confusing to the layman person. So there's what's on the bottle is um, listed as the RDA. This is the recommended dietary allowance. And it'll say like for vitamin D, for example, the recommended daily allowance for vitamin D is 400 IUs, 400 units. The reason that we have these recommended daily allowances is because those are the minimum amounts required to prevent the associated disease with deficiency of that nutrient. So for vitamin D, it's rickets. So the minimal amount of vitamin D you need to not get rickets is 400 units a day. But we know that vitamin D boosts immune function. It helps with energy via dopamine production. And it is, um, helps with hormones and a million other things. So we can optimize function. We can bring more vitamin D to the factory. Some people genetically need more vitamin D to get these benefits. So what's on the label can be confusing because people are like, oh, well, I only need this much. But again, that's the minimum amount required to prevent those associated deficiency related diseases. So when we're actually dosing people, we often will recommend higher amounts based, based on that fact and based on what their individual need is. So it, it can get a little, a little bit confusing when we're talking about how much you should take and what you should take, right? Yeah, so that's great. I mean, because it is the, the, the kind of thing is, you know, this, 
this this industry has developed a lot in the last 10 years. And since they said right. you know, the minimum amounts and, you know, some of that, like, but COVID's a great example, right? I mean, the, the research on vitamin D is you need more vitamin D. It can be really helpful. It can keep you out of the hospital. And like, yeah. I take 5,000 uh, vitamin D every day right now. Yeah, me too. Know? Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. So, so let's talk a little bit about, because some vitamins and, and supplements um, are are probably more dangerous than others as far as overdosing or being toxic. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we talked a little bit about you go into a vitamin store like GNC and you can see something like DHEA and it's it looks like it's a supplement, but it's really not. It's a hormone. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, yeah, and, yeah, so, and people are self-prescribing and they listen to a YouTube video or, and then they and then they take it and they they're they're kind of self-prescribing. So talk to us a little bit about what are some of the vitamins that you should be more concerned about and make sure that you're really talking to somebody about, you know, like the vitamin A and E and some of the things mm -hmm. that really can affect your liver. And yeah. So what are the so, key ones to look at? Yeah. So generally speaking, the fat soluble vitamins are the ones that we get more concerned about in terms of toxicity. So, so first of all, I know that we had talked about some questions regarding overdose and toxicity, right? So there, when people are like, oh, you're overdosing on your vitamins. Well, so we take 5,000 units of vitamin D a day, right? Um, that technically could be considered an overdose because it's above the RDA, but it's not toxic. Right. So then we're talking toxic. So toxic levels of vitamin D have been shown at 60,000 units a day over several months. So it's not something that happens in, it's not like a drug overdose um, and where you're getting, you know, you take 60,000 units one day and, you know, you're in the hospital. But over time, uh, that 60,000 units of vitamin D has been shown to um, cause severe toxicity in, in the body. Um, so obviously we, we never prescribe that high, but the fat soluble vitamins are the ones that we are concerned about in terms of toxic effect, because the fat soluble ones, what that, what that term means is that they can get stored in your fat tissues, which means that they can build up over time. This is different than your water soluble vitamins, which is mainly your B vitamins, um, zinc, some of the mineral, magnesium, some of our minerals. But fat-soluble vitamins, which is vitamin A, D, K, and E, are fat-soluble so they can store in your fat. So those potentially can build over time and cause toxicity. Um, we don't typically see overdoses with the vitamin D um, as much. We haven't, people just are usually deficient. They aren't taking so much that they're causing overdoses. You know, obviously there's research, at the, like I said, at the 60,000 units per day, there's damage. And the reason is because it builds up in the system and then it can lead to increased calcium reabsorption, which can in, lead to other problems. Um, vitamin K, we don't see in toxic amounts. It's really hard to overdose in vitamin K. But if you're on uh, blood thinners, you have to be really careful with vitamin K because it affects clotting and too much vitamin K can induce clotting. Um, vitamin E, we typically don't see overdoses with that either, but that also can be associated with um, thinning of the blood and clotting issues as well too. Um, but vitamin A in terms of the fat solubles, that's the one that I worry about the most in terms of toxicity and any time, usually when I'm using vitamin A in a patient, it is really high doses. Um, so I have conversation with my patient, you know, it's temporary. We're only using this for a short period of time. It can cause liver damage, which we, so we monitor the liver. We treat the liver as needed if it, if it starts to happen. It can also be extremely, extremely toxic to any pregnant women. You cannot take high doses of vitamin A. If you're pregnant, it is detrimental to the fetus. So you can get these toxic levels in some of these fat soluble ones. And again, vitamin A is the one that I get the most concerned about. That's the one that I usually pay the most attention to. And how do you know, like what kind of symptoms do you have if you, um, you know, are taking too much or you're overdosing? I mean, yeah, you know, like, so that, yeah, so that's yeah. hard. That's hard. It's, it's going to be different for all of them. Um, some of the fat soluble ones, we're going to get more like nausea symptoms and stomach upset can happen. 
Now with some of the water solubles like vitamin C and B vitamins, I can see people take too high amounts of some of the water soluble ones as well too. So like vitamin C, for example, uh, there's no harm here, but if you take too much vitamin C, it can cause loose stools, which is just unpleasant. <laughs> it can also cause stomach cramping. Um, so if you have a problem, you know, with the opposite, if you're not having good bowel movements and you could, you know, take extra vitamin C to help that along, but it's usually not a very comfortable one. And that's going to be different from every person. You know, some people can take, a lot of people can tolerate up to three to 5,000 units of vitamin C. That's another one. So the daily recommended dose of vitamin C is, it's like, I think it's 500 milligrams is the RDA for vitamin C. Um, but most of the time we're taking a couple thousand milligrams of vitamin C. Again, the RDA is just so that you don't get scurvy. That's like the, the minimum dose not to get scurvy. So the sailors back in the day would suck on limes just to get their minimal vitamin C. But we know, you know, especially in this last year, talking about how vitamin C boosts immune system, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So most people take a couple grams of vitamin C a day for immune system and different people can tolerate different amounts. I know people who work up a tolerance and will take 10 to 12 grams orally of vitamin C a day, which is a lot, but without toxic effects. Um, B vitamins, I can see if you take too many B vitamins and maybe the wrong type of B vitamin based on your genetics, which we've talked about before, right? The methylated versus hydroxy B vitamins. People can get anxious, they can get too jittery, they have trouble sleeping. Um, in some cases they can get numbness and tingling in their fingertips. That's a very common symptom because the B12 can affect your nerves. And so at high doses that can be damaging. You simply stop taking the vitamin, no, no permanent damage is done, the tingling goes away, everything's fine. But those are some other things that can happen. You can also get, um, like if you take too much niacin, you can get the flushing reaction. Um, B, uh, B6 can, can contribute to some mood disorders and confusion and difficulty thinking. So if you're taking a lot of vitamins for whatever reason, first of all, you should always check in with your provider, ideally a functional care provider, so that they can guide you with how to dose appropriately for your needs. But if you are having numbness and tingling, confusion, difficulty, focusing, if you're having stomach upset and nausea, um, those are going to be good times to maybe stop what you're doing and check in with somebody else. Um, jaundice can happen, you know, if you're having liver upset, you know, like vitamin B3, I've seen vitamin B3 cause really high liver enzymes as well too, and that can lead to jaundice. Um, so, you know, if you're going to be taking vitamins, you, you probably don't want to be overdoing them without any sort of supervision because you, you can harm yourself if you're, if you're taking too much and you're not taking what's right for you and it's not being monitored by somebody who can say, oh, we know that this vitamin causes liver damage. Let's check your liver enzymes, right? Because sometimes you don't have symptoms until it's too late. Um, hair loss, that can be another one. Um, like too much selenium can contribute to that. Um, less common, but can that can happen. Um, you don't want to take too much iron. You have to be careful with taking too much iron. Iron can deposit in the system and that can cause damage to other areas. You have to be careful with too much iron. Too much calcium can also be an issue too. So people, you know, when I'm talking with patients, especially the population that I work with, who are working on bone health and preventing osteoporosis, and right, and we're like, oh, take your calcium, take your calcium, right? But bone health is so much more than calcium. It's vitamin K, it's magnesium, it's boron, it's manganese, it's strontium. And calcium is actually just a small part of all of that. And you can take too much calcium and that results in calcium deposits in the body, which is not a good thing. Um, so, but there's no symptoms. Some of the symptoms you take too much calcium can also be stomach upset, like nausea. And um, you can also get heart uh, palp arrhythmias. Um, also, that's another symptom of, of too many vitamins. So. Uh, I hope that answers the question because they're all a little bit different depending yeah. on the vitamin, but those are some of the things to think about depending on what you're taking and what some of the symptoms that you may have could be. Well, so, I mean, so obviously, you know, if your heart's palpitating and, you know, those kinds of things, you have nauseous, you have, you know, loose stools and those kinds of things. It's like, okay, yeah. slow down, camper. But there are things right, yes, that you, exactly. <laughs> you take B vitamins, right? So your urine or your pee turns yellow. Um, should you be concerned? Yeah. 
No. Yeah, that's a good question. That's super normal. Um, that those are just basically the metabolites of the vitamins getting flushed out. Um, we don't also and some of the vitamins getting flushed out too. We don't um, absorb 100% of the vitamins that we're taking. There's just that's why IV therapy and you know vitamin injections can be really helpful because you're gonna absorb all of that. But um, orally, we're gonna. Ooh, I just lost connection on Instagram. Okay. Well, while you do that, there's a, there's a question on YouTube. Um, and I have heard this too. Some people say it's good to take a break from supplements. So, um, the question is, can I take a break from vitamins or should they be taken daily? Like multis, you know, is there a benefit to kind of do a detox and do a reset or what, what's your thought on that? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I don't, there's a couple different ways to look at it. The, um, such a bummer, Instagram just died on me. <laughs> um, the, one of the things that I think about with um, the vitamins is that if you are, it, I don't think it's natural to be taking vitamins all the time anyway. Um, they, uh, you know, we're, so here I am promoting vitamins, but it's also that we, as humans, I also don't think that that's the answer either. You know, ideally we would live in a world where we're up with the sun, we're down with the sun, we're eating from the earth, we're one with nature, and we're really a lot more in tune with what we need and getting what we need that way. We don't live in that world. We live in the concrete jungle, high stress, high all these things, right? So the vitamins can help us manage that. Now, it's really helpful. And because I also feel like it's sort of counterintuitive to what we actually, like what our body wants, um, I say take breaks, like give your body a rest. I don't want to say that it's like a um, reset type of thing, but I think that it's good to just give yourself a break because it can be hard to be taking, you know, vitamins every, you know, I mean, I have, well, they're under my desk. I have like, you know, six, seven bottles of all my things that I take every day. And I go through phases and I'm like, oh my God, I can't take another supplement, you know, and I take a break just to give myself a break. Um, and it also gives you the opportunity to sort of fine tune you know, so if I take a break and a couple of months later, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm just kind of not feeling like 100%. Then I'm like, oh, right, because I haven't been taking my adrenal support and my B vitamins. I need to get back on those. And as soon as I get back on those, I'm like, oh, okay, I feel better. So then it can really help you fine tune a little bit better what you do need when you take breaks, because then you're starting to become more aware of what's doing what. Um, mm -hmm. I also do think that all of those pills over time can be hard on digestion, can be hard on the liver, and it is good to kind of give the body whew, a bit of a breather from having to take those things all the time. I had a patient, dear sweet woman, who had taken every supplement that she'd ever been told to take and never stopped taking, taking it. So by the time she got to me, her list had grown and grown and grown to several pages long, and then she, you know, and she was complaining of stomach upset. And I was like, well, maybe we shouldn't take all these pills. Yeah. Um, so I do think that it can be beneficial to take a break. I think pulsing the vitamins can be very helpful. It totally depends on what your health goal is. I pulse mine. I, I always do a multivitamin, whether it's an actual capsule or it's mixed in with my protein shake. I always do a multivitamin in one of those ways. But some of the other supportive elements like my adrenal support and uh, blood pressure so, support. So what does other... taking a break and pulse mean, you know, to the average oh, person? Okay. So like, is, is taking a break three days, a week, a month? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, it's going to depend on the situation, but I would say a week or two is probably a good, like, I just need a couple of weeks to reset. You could go as much as a month. I, when I take my breaks, it's not necessarily okay, today's the 31st, I'm going to stop today and I'm going to start again on the 31st of next month or whatever. Um, it's more of uh, intuitively, my stomach says, please stop putting any more pills in me. And then, and, you know, a month later when I'm feeling like I'm dragging a little bit, I'm like, oh, time to take my pills again. So you can, you know, choose to do it how you see to do it. But if you want to be methodical about it, then I would do a two to four week break. Okay, that's great. Well, we're, we're running out of time, but, but I, I think the last question is, 
Um, if you're really pretty healthy and you're eating really well, right, and you're getting a lot of, I mean, obviously the best way is to eat organic food and, and eat real right. food that's gone in the garden to get your vitamins and, and nutrients and, and, those, and minerals. But I mean, if you're a really lousy eater, you probably need more supplements. But if you're really pretty conscious about what you eat, um, how do you combine supplementation with diet? Ooh, okay, so that, <laughs> that's a tough one. It depends on the individual. You know, if somebody is coming to me and they're super inflamed and they have cardiac risk and I know I need to give them more omega-3 supplements, but they're a pescatarian and they eat salmon and avocado three to four days a week, I might not give them as much because they just don't need to take as much. Now, that's a particular nutrient that you can't really overdose in. I mean, we give people up to six grams of omega-3s and higher, 12 grams a day. I mean, that's a lot. So for example, you know, most of them are, you know, 800 milligrams. So to give you guys some context of how high we go there. Um, so for somebody like that, though, I would say, okay, well, you don't have to swallow as many pills or spend as much money because you're eating all those omega-3s. So we can probably back off on how much omega-3s that I'm giving you. Um, it, it, if you're eating, you know, lots of fruits and vegetables and getting a lot of your vitamins in, you know, maybe I'm going to say based on your symptoms, you need just a little bit more B12, but you don't, and a little bit more magnesium, but maybe you don't need a, a actual multivitamin um, because you're getting most of it from your fruits and vegetables, but you specifically need these two things. Um, the other thing too, like we talked about earlier, is that most of us really aren't getting in all the fruits and vegetables. The vegetables themselves may not necessarily have the content they need to have anymore. And most of us just need more to keep up in the world that we're living with. So I wish that I had a more clear cut answer, but it's so hard because everybody's so different and, you know, which is why it's called personalized medicine um, to give sort of a straight answer, but you know, if you're eating lots of fruits and vegetables, you're getting lots of healthy fats and you may not need a daily multi, you may not need to take as much omega-3s, you may just need specific things for your specific needs, like extra B12 and extra magnesium, which are most people right. need more of. So I guess we're out of time, but in conclusion, we're yeah. all unique. We're all unique yes. as people. Yeah. So like talk to your provider, whoever that is, if it's a functional medicine doctor, or nutritionist, whatever, make sure it's coordinated. Yeah. Um, you know, I see so many people, oh, my trainer says this, my nutritionist says that, my doctor says this, just like, hey guys, pick your lead. <laughs> yeah. And then I do want to add in one note to that. You can do testing to look at your vitamin and mineral levels. It's if you really want to like dial that in, there is some testing to do that. But do note that typical in the typical medical system, if they're sending you to lab for requests to test your vitamins, what they're looking at is the serum concentration of water soluble vitamins. Like B12, they're like, test my B12, you know, test my magnesium. These are water soluble vitamins, which means that they will vary from day to day in the water space of your blood. And it's gonna depend on what you ate the day before, or you know, if you took a vitamin yesterday or that morning. So I don't like the serum tests for testing vitamin levels. I don't find them super accurate because there's too many variables there. But there are some specialty tests that look more closely at markers that indicate what your levels actually are in the cellular level. And so if people are interested, that is an option that, that does exist out in the world if people really want to dial that in more. Yeah, so some of those tests are like micronutrient tests like SpectraCell right. or other. Yeah, or Genova's, like yeah, NutriVal, exactly. Mm -hmm. NutriEval, yeah. And most of those tests are not, you can't as a consumer get them yourself. You have to go correct. to your doctor, correct? Yeah, yeah. Those ones, unfortunately, are not something that you can do online with some of the tests that you can find online and typical, um, typical, uh, medical doc providers in the standard medical system don't use those tests either so um so all do, tests are know, not created I'm trying to like put you in a position where like, you have to come see me now to get this specialty test i'm just putting it out there so people know that this exists so if yeah. they're really curious that is something that can be done um with whoever your provider might be but it would have to be an alternative functional provider. no i hear it all the time 
oh, my doctor tested my hormones and they're, and they're all the same. I mean, I'm all good. And I'm like, well, right. let me see your hormone panel. Uh, okay, well, we didn't check half of the things we need to check. Right, so, right. Yeah. And, well, it's normal. So when that was another thing, we, I know we're out of time. There's so many things. But normal ranges on lab work, right? And we talked about this briefly, like the Quest and Lab and LabCorp, where they get their normal ranges, is they go out and just sample blood from a bunch of random people and take the average of all those random people and say that that's normal. So you're being compared to normal against Joe Schmo down the street who drinks a six pack of beer and smokes a pack of cigarettes a day. And, you know, that's the now the new normal, right? These are not optimal ranges. And that's what we're here for is we're trying to help people really optimize their health and their wellness because we have so many people suffering un need, you know, needlessly because they're not living their best lives because they're being compared to Joe Schmo down the street on the lab test. Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, I, I think it, it's just we're all so uniquely different. And like sometimes like I've had a, as you know, a stressful week. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. Monday. Right. So I need yes. a little I need a little extra B vitamins this week, probably. Yeah, you need but, extra B vitamins, you need extra magnesium this week, you need extra glycine this week, you need extra theanine this week, right? Uh, so anyway, so I, I guess my message is don't try and do this on your own. It's too complex. Yeah. You're too complex of a human being. Get somebody who's going to look at your whole person and 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 treat uh -huh. you like the whole person you are. And, and don't try and do yeah. it on your own. My guess is you'll probably make a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then don't be scared of it either. You know, vitamins it can be really helpful. Supplements can be really helpful, you know, as long as they're done in the right way. All right. Well, thanks, Don. Right. Until next week, um, have a good one and enjoy the beautiful weather. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Talk to you bye soon. Bye-bye.